I'm Roberto Baldwin, and this is Tomorrow Today's Sustainable Mobility Brief. The transportation world is evolving at a rate not seen in decades. The transition from fossil fuels to sustainable energy has brought with it some truly exciting opportunities, but also some confusion. I'll sift through the noise and share quick updates on the latest news, trends, and advancements that will impact our world for years to come. This week on the Tomorrow Today's Briefs podcast, I'm joined by Dr. Raymond Corver, and he is the Senior Director and Head of Commercial for Factorial. Thank you, Raymond, for joining me today. Uh, let's let's just start out with what is fact, Factorial? What What is this company? Yeah, sure. Um, Roberto, a pleasure to be here. Factorial is a next generation battery manufacturer based in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And we are focused on bringing uh, a high energy density next generation batteries to mostly mobility applications. And so, so recently you've made some pretty huge partnerships with, uh, with Stellantis, which is, you know, multinational uh, automaker uh, and Mercedes, also a multinational automaker. And so what, what do these partners mean and why are, why are these partnerships so important? Yeah, that's, uh, that's really a great announcement. So we had two, two announcements, uh, one on the B sample shipment to Mercedes-Benz and then the, um, the first uh, fleet for uh, the 2026 Dodge Daytona Charger. Those partnerships are essential to, to the growth of the company. So they're important for validation of the technology. And um, of course, we, we learn a lot during those partnerships, how we need to bring our technology to the market, what, what hurdles we have to clear. So yeah, we're very, very thankful for, for the support of our uh, commercial partners. And, and what is the, the technology that you're bringing to these companies? Especially when, you know, we're talking about batteries. Batteries are a huge deal. Everything is essentially going to batteries <laughs> at this point. What What is uh, Factorial doing? Yes, right. So Factorial is building solid state batteries. We have two technology tracks. One is called FEST. This is our quasi solid state technology. And then we have Solstice, which is our uh, all solid state technology. The technology uses uh, lithium metal and uh, factorial proprietary electrolyte solution. And with this, we create very high energy density, very lightweight batteries. And you know, you, you talk about that electrolyte. I know the, the big issue with solid state batteries, I don't think people understand, is that it's that electrolytes. It's, it's battling the dendrites. It's like, can, can, you, can, you, can you share some information about that? Sure. Yeah, the, the electrolyte is the secret sauce of the battery if you want to. So it really has to ensure very homogeneous deposition of lithium. And our team spent a lot of time researching an ideal formula and it's constantly say, re-engineering, uh, evolutionary approach to the electrolyte development. Talk a little bit about what solid state means for mobility, because I think a lot of people, they hear the word solid state and they, they like, I, I know it's better, but they don't know why. Yes, yes, absolutely. So there's plenty of variations of solid state batteries. The main motivator is higher energy densities and higher safety. So in conventional lithium ion batteries, you use a flammable uh, organic compound. If you want to bring this in contact with lithium metal, you create a very volatile, quite dangerous system. So um, by introducing a solid component, uh, you add an extra level of safety, and also you ensure compatibility between the electrolyte and the lithium metal anode. And the lithium metal anode itself is responsible for the high energy density. And so the that high energy density, so so can you explain in context what that means for, for, let's say, an EV? An EV that currently has, say, a 100 kilowatt hour battery, like what... Like solid state, what does solid state do for that vehicle? Yeah, you can play it both ways. Either you keep the same amount of energy and you have a smaller battery and a lighter battery, or you say you want to keep the same volume or the same weight, and then you fill this with more capacity. So you could potentially increase the, the range of the vehicle by adding more battery, or you could reduce the cost by, by minimizing uh, the battery that's needed to achieve the required range. So you could so you could have let's say that that same capacity in a smaller package, and because it's it weighs less, let's say the vehicle got three hundred miles of range, it could potentially get you know three fifty four hundred just because the, the 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 weight savings really is is pretty impressive. Correct. The, the weight savings are are very important. So the first product, the B sample that we announced together with Mercedes, has an energy density of three hundred ninety watt hours per kg. This is significantly higher than today's lithium ion batteries. And those weight savings, they can translate, first of all, in, in higher efficiency of the vehicle, but also they can be used to cut costs. For example, in the battery packs, you can use 
heavier materials that are cheaper instead of using uh, very lightweight components that might be more costly. And can you compare the the the, the energy per kilograms of a uh, solid state, what you delivered and what like a typical lithium ion battery has? Yeah, so there's, there's, a, there's a broad range of energy densities. I would say today's lithium ion batteries probably have somewhere between 250 to 300, 320 watt hours per kg. So our first product starts at 390, and this is really just the, the floor. So uh, we, we plan to go higher than that, but this translates into like 25, 30% improvement in, in the weight, which is, I think, uh, which is more like a stepwise function. And, and so with the, with the Stellantis partnership, what's, what's interesting is that solid state has always felt like it's five years away. For the past 15, 20 years, we're, we're always, you know, solid state's coming, solid state's coming. But now we're talking putting in, in a, a vehicle that, that Stellantis will be building. Correct, correct. This is, this is very exciting for us as well. So the biggest hurdle for us was always, um, or not for us only, for, for everyone in the industry was scalability. Factorial's approach is really using existing uh, manufacturing infrastructure, which makes this all much more short term. So we don't have to develop as many um, new processes. We don't have to uh, retrain all the people. So we can leverage a lot of this, what's already out there. And this makes us achieve a very short timeline. What was sort of the biggest issue for, for Factorial to, to create for developing a solid state battery? Like what, what was the huge roadblock? Well, it, I think that the scaling part is certainly important. I would say also securing the necessary components. So some things we just had to take in-house, for example, where we felt we, it wasn't readily available. But I think the, the fact that we have a B sample now out there shows that we've successfully cleared those hurdles. And um, we're one of a few companies that have made it this far to a cell that big. One of the, the issues with solid state batteries has always been that the sort of the dendrite issue. Like it, it, solid state, it, you could build a solid state battery, but its cycles, the charge and recharge cycles just haven't been high, as high or you can't get as many cycles as you can of a lithium ion battery because there's these things, you know, in, within the electrolyte, these dendrites, which they're like little spikes and they create short circuits. Like how, how is fact, factorial like solving that how like how that's it's just it's like a hard problem that everyone is having issues with yeah i, th I think initially the thought was in the industry that you can just create a physical barrier so a solid instead of a liquid it's not quite as easy so um we've now settled on a quasi solid electrolyte and i would say it's really in the interface chemistry that allows us to homogeneously plate and strip the lithium over a prolonged time so um really trying to delay any formation of dendrites, uh, avoid those inefficiency. That's our strategy. So the what you're sending to, to, to Stellantis and to Mercedes, the charge cycles, is it on par with lithium ion right now or is it near there? Or is it just better than what we've seen from solid state over the past 20 years? Like how many times you can charge it before you create those dendrites and those issues? Yeah, I would say um, there's, there's still a development gap, but I think we're, we're pretty much matching lithium ion batteries are able to achieve in terms of charging. Of course, the, the stakes are only higher in the future. So um, there's, there's no reason to stop developing on the charging side. <laughs> so, so, you know, the big news is always when it comes to batteries is the transportation. Um, what other applications do you see this battery technology uh, go, uh, working in? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a, a, a couple of interesting markets out there. So um, first of all, aviation is a market that uh, I think, obviously due to the weight savings, our batteries are very attractive for. And then there's a couple of other markets like Marine that would take cells that are being used in automotive, build boats around it. So there's a lot of synergies in those markets. And we're, we've started talking to those players also. Uh, this, And especially after the announcement, of course, we got a lot of interest from those people. I can imagine because it's your, you know, your, your 25% weight savings. Uh, and this is sort of, you know, like you say, the, the amount of uh, energy you can, you can deploy uh, or d energy density is is at the floor is is higher than that of lithium ion already. So it seems like you, you probably would have a lot of folks knocking at your door. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And and I think what's important is we have cell level advantages. Um, but then of course uh, I think part of the value proposition is also to have pack level advantages too. So turn for example higher thermal stability into uh, lower pack measures for safety. And so, so, so right now, looking in the future, and I, I know this is really difficult when, especially when it comes to solid state and batteries and the EV <laughs> world. But what do, what do you see in, in, in say five, ten years? Do you see mass production solid state vehicles on the road in, in a couple years, five years, ten years? What, what, 
what what do you think is is hap is going to happen or do you see is going to happen yeah i would i would say that's totally possible i mean um given that we're at b samples today and i think also following the still antis announcement i think we can uh, can expect a continuous uh, rollout of the technology and pretty much uh, you can expect that we would replace lithium ion batteries um especially say the nmc type uh, where this is used in, in throughout the applications well, well, thank you so much, Raymond. I really appreciate you chatting with me today. Yeah, Factorial, check them out. And um, I'm, I again, I, I think I've said this before. Like, solid state's always been five years away <laughs> for the last 15, 20 years, and it's nice to see, like, oh, here's a vehicle that'll be, you know, going to production next year. That'll that you know people will will be able to you know drive even if it's like short term. It's just something. That's 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 the exciting part. Yeah, absolutely. I fully agree, and we're very excited. And stay tuned for the future. We have a lot more more things to come. Thank you, Robert. For more information about the evolution of sustainability, head on over to sustainablecareers.sae.org. There, you can check out our interview with Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson about the future of EV efficiency. Be sure to subscribe and listen every week on your favorite podcast platform. SAE International makes no representations as to the accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. The information and opinions are for general information only. SAE International does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast.